the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I hope you've been enjoying these studies, but making it plain. We want to make it plain because that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to look at us. That look, he ain't talking about being religious anymore. We, we we need to recognize that we got to live by faith. We've been talking about the anatomy of faith. We've been talking about the fact that it's just to live by faith. And you know what? We're going to continue to talk about it because if we're supposed to live by faith, then we need to be able to understand we walk by faith, not by sight, because everything else does not or will not work until we get in our mind. The arena of faith is in our mind. Come on, saints. That the just shall live by faith. We got to understand that God wants us to have trusting, listen, this is, that's a key word even in the study, in this session here, trusting faith in him. We already been through some of the scripture. We talked about the scriptures, some of the key texts of the scripture. Let's pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that those who are going to listen to this video will receive the anointing and blessing of God. Father, I pray, move me out of the way that the Holy Spirit have this way. Let us get into your word. And let us do what is something I say. Pay it plain for us, Lord. Make it plain. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Look, let me tell you something. In this very, that's another thing I want to make sure I want to bring into this. The just to live by faith. And then we need to make sure we understand. See, faith is not a denomination. Faith is not uh, a religion. Faith is a pointing to a particular source that we have faith in. Now, as believers, when we say the just shall live by faith, we're really saying is that the just shall live by faith in God's word, the written word and spoken word of God. Because we need to understand the Bible, as we was talking before, the Bible is the written record of God's interaction with man, all the way from the garden in, just in Genesis to Revelation. It's showing the characters and the people that God interacted with, the nation of Israel, and all the other nations to include Egypt, uh, Rome. Uh, it, it, it's, it's the interaction. The Bible has written records of the interaction of God with man. And sometimes we, you know, sometimes people get confused and say, is it a historical book? Well, it has historical aspects in it. it, has historical points in it. You can go through the Bible and find artifacts and stuff like that that deals with the times of the periods and the location, geographic locations of, of the things happening in the Bible. But the Bible is a written record inspired by God but written by man, inspired by God, written by man to conclude witnessing of the interactions of God with man and with, man, with themselves and everything else from, from spiritual warfare and everything else. All those things are in the, in the Bible, just like things are happening in our lives daily. There were good people in, in, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. There are good people in your present life. And there's some bad people in your present life or in this world or this environment we live in. And that's why the Bible said just it, it's, the just shall live by faith. But we want to make sure we even talk to this study is that we're talking about having faith in God's word. And I, we put that, we even put in that in God's word. And I want to make sure you understand, we're not just talking about the written word of the Bible. We're also talking about the spoken voice of God in your life. We, because, you, you know, one of the things we did when it was talking to him, we talked about trust and faith and really trusting and faith in God. 
is the fact that, that you can have trust in other things. And we know that, right? Some of us have trust in our own abilities. Some of us have trust in other people. How many times and when we talk about confronting from sickness and any in other things, we let people speak into our life, contradicting the things that we don't have a desire for. You know, we 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 the the whole purpose of even this ministry is to talk about and teach the word of God in a practical, effective manner. That's what that vision for the ministry is about, right? We we want to make it practical in our life. And, 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 you know, Revelation 12, 11 is that we will come the enemy by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. See, the, the Bible, <laughs> our testimonies of man interacting with God. Our day present situation now is that we are also uh, witnessing of what God said and to us individually, personally. And that's the thing about it is you want to have faith in God personally. It has to be a personal thing. I think that's what we're missing. And sometimes you know, people point your way and have a personal relationship in a person or personal relationship in a ministry or personal relationship in things. When God is saying no, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by having faith in God's word. <laughs> we talk about the fact is, and when we, when we use the, the, the central text, we use Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. We talk about in Mark 11, 24, we talk about the fact is that what we desire is a blueprint. Hope is also a blueprint of it, what's going on in your mind, the things that happens in your life first. I'm talking about the things that we have faith in must first be here in the mind. That's the arena of faith. The arena of faith is in your mind. Yeah, it's a mind game. It's a mind warfare. I think if it's a game, it's thing is. It's just a fun and game, but in reality, we're talking about the realities of faith, the realities of life, and whether we're going to have faith in ourselves, faith in other people, or faith in God. And sometimes I think some, sometimes some of the ministries in the past have focused on trying to get us to focus and have faith and confidence in people other than God, some intentionally, some not intentionally. And therefore, you gotta weigh that for yourself. That's why we have people who don't receive God. And there's people who rejected God, rejected our faith, rejected Christianity because of people. We get wrapped up because of the, 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 the hypocrisy of the way people think and do things. So we, 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 and then we get wrapped up and, 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 and when somebody we have high expectations and See, you both have high expectation of God, but we have high expectation of people. And when those people let you down, then you're going to turn away from God. But that's what happens, isn't it? And that's what we got to look at. And, and so we want to make sure, and for you to understand, to just live by faith, but we got to make sure we put that, that addendum to it, is just to live by faith in God's word, spoken and written word. You want to have faith in the word of God. You want to have faith in the voice of God. And we said that God is talking to you. You know God is talking to you. God is talking to me. The question is, is to make sure we understand is not only to listen, but to obey. God, not man. And see, that's where we get in trouble. We start, when we sit there trying to get dealing with man, then we get off tracks. We have to understand faith is our weapon. Faith is our weapon in dealing and combating with the things we happen and encounter in life. Uh, the spiritual warfare, the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's why we, we have to understand is the arena of faith is here. And we got to understand the weapon the, of our warfare and the spiritual weapons that starts first. And that we have to be able to watch out and understand that we want to say we have faith in God's word. Not in man's word. I see it is happening over and over again. Not in man's word, but in God's word. When he speaks to you, 
He speaks to you when you read and study the Word of God. He's speaking to you personally. Because you know what? Everything that Bible, until you make it personal for you, you know what I mean? When it said that by stripes we are healed, okay? Is it's it reading and the intellectual knowledge of it, but it becomes personal when you say, I heard from God that I am healed. I need to hear from him for me personally to make that word, that scripture real in my life is to hear God speak to my spirit to receive that word of God. And I'm saying is that we want to have faith in God because we can have faith in other things. Even Jesus said, have faith in God. Why? Because we can have faith in other things. And one of the things is that the, I said faith is a weapon. And if you, if you try to use it outside of the will of God, it can still be effective, but also destructive. We can take the fact is that the, hey, how, we are brought up in the study, the, the people who attacked the Pentagon, not the Pentagon, but the Capitol Hill uh, on the 6th of January, those people were having faith in a lie. Call it where you want to see it with a faith in a lie. Election was stolen, far as they're concerned. And they were peed off angry and they did things that they normally would not do. They wanted to hang the vice president. They wanted to go after the Speaker of the House. They wanted to stop an election certification based on a lie. But they all came one accord in that lie. And look at the force that they bought with them. And in some cases, it was nearly the way to look like it was nearly good and successful. There's another incident that, that really clears in the Bible of when people come on one accord outside the will of God. That's in Genesis 11. And uh, when, matter of fact, I, let me see if I can bring it up. In Genesis 11, it, it was interesting that those people uh, came on a one accord. And, and, and so, and, and, and the weapon they had was faith, but, but it was faith in themselves. And they came on that one accord. And, and, and the scripture I'm talking about is in Genesis 11, starting in verse 1. It's talking about the Tower, tower of Babel. Uh, it said, And the whole earth was a, look at that, one language and one speech. And one of the things we came in our Bible study was, it, you know, matter of fact, back in the time when Jesus came, uh, the fullness of time, there was a common language. There was Greek. That was the common language at the time. So people could speak and be of one language to a degree. Even though they had their own personal cultural language, they had that international language at the time, which was Greek. And now we're talking about even in, in 2021, uh, we'll find out that now we get to the point that people can have uh, almost like Star Trek, uh, 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 a translator. Uh, some people can use the phone and they can look at the different uh, languages and translate it for you. Some people get in the point where they can translate from English to another language, right? It's getting to that point. You can type and you can type in another language. Uh, so computers and everything is getting smarter, but which, which is interesting because that's basically what the scripture is kind of saying. The verse one again, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to let us, not God, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower who top may reach up to heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And if you remember, Jesus said, God said in Genesis chapter one, 
replenish the earth. So that means being scattered. These people were determined to go outside the will of God and, and, and want to just stay in one place. And look at this verse five. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. Now, some some people sit there and say is that they they you know just you know we don't have a a, a a real fix of time, but it looked like verse four they was going to go let's go do this, and then verse five is God said let us go see what they built. Uh, and what I think I just thought my translation of it is they already built the city, they already built the tower in their mind. Things formulate first in the mind. The blueprints starts off in the mind. Nothing you're driving, nothing you're worrying, wearing, start off as it is. It had to be formulated in the mind, conceptualized, conceptualized in the mind, then put into some type of model, some type of blueprint, and then it had to be constructed. The car you drive, the shoes you wear, all that stuff first started right here. And somebody thought an idea. And so that's what I'm saying. I said, Bill, God saw what was in their minds, right? And the Lord came down to see the city in the tower with the children of men built. And the Lord said, look at this, y'all. This is very important. That's why I said faith is dangerous. If we have faith in something other than the will of God or the word of God. He says, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language, meaning there's a one accord. And this they begin to do. And look at it. He said, now nothing. This is God saying nothing will be restrained from them with they had. Look at that word. Imagine to do. That's what I'm saying. That they, they ain't built the city. They ain't built the tower yet. But they had imagined it. And God is saying nothing will restrain from them what they imagine to do. That's why we understand imagination is, is, is reference to an image. It's reference to something that is, is, is not tangible uh, that you can hold, but you can conceptualize, right? Conceptualize, right? You, you, it's, it's, it's formulated. It's an imagination. Where's the imagination? It's in our mind. That's why we're talking about just to live by faith is we're living with the understanding of what's going on in our mind. That's what you got to understand. What's going on in your mind? Do you have an expectation of something good going on in your life? Or you have an expectation of something bad going on in your life? What is going on in your mind? What are you seeing? The just shall walk by faith, not by sight. That means that it's not walking by your senses. It's walking by the things that you see in your mind. That's what God is trying to talk about with the anatomy of faith is that it's what we imagine to do. He's trying to tell us in all the way back in Genesis, the power of the imagination, the power of the imagination, the power of things going on in our head. It was pushes us and causes us to move a certain way. And that's why we want to make sure that the just shall live by faith. And then we talk about faith, have faith in God. Come on, saints. That's what God, the scripture is very clear. You read and study for yourself. Those people were one language, one accord, and they all became one focus. And he said, nothing will restrain from what they imagine to do. And I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> that ability is in us. And we have to make sure that we want to make sure that our source is the will of God to, to allow things to, to come to pass in our life. Faith is a weapon. They can be effective. Faith allows you to graduate from school. Faith allows you to go to work and be successful. Faith has allowed you to be able to confront sickness and disease and that you overcome it because you're strong in faith. That's why God wants us to get, get an understanding of that. We can have faith in something else, but God wants us to have faith in him, his word, his word spoken and written. Because he's speaking to us. We just got to listen. And we do it daily. And I think that's what we mess up in. And that's why we got to watch out. We say, well, I just want 
what was in a written word. No, I want to hear his voice. I want to hear him. And that's what you want to. Amen. So I hope you enjoyed this segment of Bible study. We're still working on that of faith because we just shall live by faith. It's not a religion, it's a reality. And it's what goes on in your mind. The ring of, ring of faith is your mind, amen? Hey, I'll catch you next time. God bless you. I'll check you later. Bye-bye.